a lot of people who are coming to the area already heard about, of course, Asheville. They might have heard about places like Brevard, Weaverville, Waynesville, Black Mountain, Hendersonville, and they start looking either in Asheville or in those areas. That's what my team and I hear a lot from people who are coming to check out the area or looking to relocate to the area. And they overlook some other areas right around Asheville in a closer proximity to Asheville that are up and coming that are not always on people's radars. And so in today's video, I wanted to highlight those up and coming areas in Asheville, North Carolina. Welcome back to my channel. This is Elena Kavrigin with Nesting Dolls Realty powered by EXP Realty here in Asheville, North Carolina. If you need help relocating to the Asheville area, if you have any kind of questions about communities, neighborhoods, parts of towns, different towns around Asheville, what it's like to live, breathe, work in the Asheville area, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. Our contact information is down in the description. Do it today. Do not wait until last minute. And so because a lot of people do not have those areas on their radars, they kind of overlook them. But quite a few of our clients end up being in those areas because they start looking everywhere. And that is what I suggest to all of my clients, unless they really have specific criteria, they really want to be in that specific neighborhood or part of town. I always suggest look in the whole Buncombe County and see what is available. Availability and inventory has been super low. It can be a challenge to find a place to live a place that you want to live with that meets all of you or most of your criteria in a specific part of town or in a specific neighborhood. So I suggest look everywhere, look broader, see what's available. And so because of that, because of limited inventory back in the day, well, two years ago, two, three years ago, bidding wars on bidding wars, some people ended up being in those up and coming areas that I'm going to cover in this video. Number one on my list, and it's not in any particular order of best to worst, just that's how I just kind of organized in this video. Number one is Candler, North Carolina. Candler, North Carolina is an unincorporated community. <laughs> By the way, I wanted to give a big shout out to somebody who made a comment on my, one of my previous videos and called me out on making a mistake in many of my previous videos by referring to all these unincorporated areas and communities as towns, when in fact they are not towns technically, they are unincorporated areas. So Candler, North Carolina is one of them. Candler, North Carolina is located just west of Asheville. And so when talking about living in Candler, you would not refer to it as living in West Asheville you would refer to it as living west of Asheville. And there's a big, big difference between living in West Asheville and living west of Asheville. Candler, North Carolina has been traditionally a very traditional place, area, where a lot of locals who've been here for decades, a lot of natives specifically, still refer to some landmarks that used to be in Candler, whether it's a convenience store or a general store or maybe grocery store, when describing where this or that is located when given direction, you would definitely get a lot more for your money in Candler, North Carolina, if you're willing to go there. In fact, people who are looking for some land, for some property, and do not want to live like this close to their neighbors, that's, what, that's one of the areas where they look. Candler, North Carolina. Median and average sales price in Candler, North Carolina has been in a low 400s, but again, I feel like it's a little misleading is because a lot of properties that are lower price properties like mobile homes, single wides and double wides, you know, they're priced very low or a lot lower and maybe not something that you would necessarily want to uh, find or buy, but they kind of pull the, that median and average sales price down a little bit. And so there's a number of traditional communities in Candler, North Carolina, but there's a lot of properties that are not in traditional communities. They're just kind of standalone properties. 
farms, farmsteads, properties on a lot of acreage, that is not uncommon. In fact, the farther you go from Asheville, the more of that you see. It's either mountain communities or traditional communities, but for the most part, it's just regular properties sitting there on acreage, some acreage, lots of acreage, it just depends. Biltmore Lake is an upscale community it is also located in Kendler, North Carolina. Although Biltmore Lake has its own address and if you were to live in Biltmore Lake neighborhood, you would have your address as uh, 123 Main Street at Biltmore Lake, North Carolina. But technically it is located in Kendler. And it's kind of one of a kind communities over there, over that way in west, west of Asheville, where you, you have a lot of upscale luxury homes. Part of it is gated. Majority of it is not gated. I covered that community in one of my previous videos. You can check it out later. And Biltmore Lake is an example of one of those traditional communities in Candler, North Carolina, west of Asheville. So what draws people who live in traditional communities, who don't have a lot of acreage, who do not have acres of land or farms to live in Candler, Candler, North Carolina? Well, again, like I said, it's affordability. You get more for your money. You get more house for your money, but also the convenience and proximity to everything that Buncombe County and Asheville specifically has to offer. Depending, of course, on where in Candler you are, you can be 10, 15 minutes from downtown Asheville. If you live in Biltmore Lake, you are about, again, depending on where in Biltmore Lake you are, you might have, might, it might take some time to go down those windy roads inside the community, but you are a straight shot five minutes from, five, seven minutes from Asheville outlets on Brevard Road and all the shopping and dining on Brevard Road, or if you go another different direction, you are about 10 minutes from the West Asheville and all the, the West Asheville restaurants, bars, coffee shops, everything that the West Asheville has to offer. And downtown Asheville is another, I want to say five, seven minutes from West Asheville. So the convenience, you're not right there in the thick of things. You're not dealing with all the Asheville things, but you are stone's throw away from everything that you might need. I'm going to come back to the west side as a bonus all the way at the end of this video, so don't go anywhere. For now, I want to stay in Buncombe County, right in, in the Asheville area, and the next part of Asheville I want to talk about is town of Woodfin. Woodfin is located just north of North Asheville, just north of downtown Asheville, it is a very small town that is kind of located between downtown Asheville and downtown Weaverville. There's no downtown in Woodfin and it is located along French Broad River. So Woodfin has this very picturesque setting because it is located along French Broad River. It is very beautiful, in, especially in summertime. Median sales price in Woodfin, North Carolina is in the mid 300s. So again, it looks like and it sounds like you get more for your money and living in Woodfin is a lot cheaper than in Asheville proper. You are going to be super close to everything that Asheville, specifically North Asheville has to offer and North Asheville is one of the most expensive parts of town. So you have proximity to everything that there is in North Asheville, all the restaurants, a ton of grocery stores, especially on Merriman Avenue, which can take you all the way to Woodfin and you are not paying as much to live there. And the town of Woodfin might seem small and harmless, but it has its own rules and it can stand for itself. For example, just last year, the town of Woodfin banned all short-term rentals going forward. All the existing short-term rentals that are right there, operating in Woodfin right now can continue to operate, but if somebody were to sell their short-term rental, the next owner will not be able to operate. So if you're thinking about investing in a cheaper and an up-and-coming area, keep that in mind. You will not be able to buy anything in Woodfin 
and continue or start a new short-term rental there. Another thing with Woodfin that is kind of overlooked a lot of times, I feel like, is that there's a sewage treatment plant that is kind of right there in the middle. It's very close to the river. It's basically on the river, not like on the river, but it's on the bank of the river. And it smells. Now, it doesn't smell as bad as the paper mill in Canton used to smell, but it does smell at times. And so just kind of keep that in mind. Now, on the bright side, there are new developments that are happening in Woodfin, and that's why it is that up and coming area. You can still get in at a cheaper price to live in Woodfin and you have access to all the amenities in North Asheville. Downtown Asheville is like five minutes away from Woodfin and all those new developments like a new Silver Line Park that is coming to Woodfin. So we are getting very close to enjoying more outdoor recreation in Woodfin thanks to Buncombe County Commissioner's approval of over $18 million fund for the Woodfin Greenway and Blue Way project. So what it's gonna have is five miles of Greenway along the French Broad River and Beaver Dam Creek, the construction of a whitewater wave made from rock and concrete installed in the riverbed. I really want to see how that's gonna come out and look. Uh, the expansion of Riverside Park by nearly four acres addition of an overlook pavilion and an area to observe the French Broad and the Wave. Silver Line Park, which opened in April of 2022 and offers a playground, river access, and a craggy mountain rail line connection, is also part of the project. I will be really surprised they will, if there will not be a brewery as part of that project somewhere in the, in the vicinity because after all, uh, Asheville is a beer city, USA, so and we love our beer. Right now, one of my favorite places to go in Woodfin, when I meet clients, we actually had a client appreciation event a couple years back, right there in Woodfin, is at a High Five Coffee Shop. High Five Coffee Shop. High Five Coffee Shop is a local franchise, a local chain of, I wanna say three or four, shops right here in Asheville and one of them is right there on the river. It looks very small but it's adjacent to a little park and you can drink your, the best coffee in town right there on the river. It is lovely. It is lovely to sit there and just enjoy your good coffee and look at the river, listen to the birds and just disconnect. It's so lovely. I highly recommend if you are checking out Woodfin, check out High Five Coffee. It is <laughs> kind of hard to find first time because it's behind that big brick, red brick building that you would never even think that there's a coffee shop right behind it, but you have to drive there behind it and it's gonna be right there. You'll find it. One of the best coffee shops in town. So highly recommend. Moving east of Asheville, and the next up and coming area in Asheville, North Carolina, where some people end up because there's no inventory here in Asheville, in Asheville proper, and then they realize that, hey, Swannanoa is actually very close to Asheville. It's kind of like a suburb of Asheville, right between Asheville and Black Mountain. So you get the best of both worlds. You can go to Black Mountain and to it's restaurants and galleries and coffee shops and breweries hang out there in that downtown or you can go to Asheville and the commute is very easy. It's not like taking I-26 <laughs> coming from South Asheville or from Hendersonville Road or from Hendersonville coming from Black Mountain to Asheville and you know to Swannanoa in between is relatively easy. It's an easy commute. Unless, of course, you have to go to Hendersonville. Anyways, Swannanoa is located east of Asheville, east of East Asheville. It is not a town, technically. It's a census-designated place in Buncombe County with a population of about 5,000 people according to 2020 data. There's no downtown. It doesn't even have like a center or town center or anything like that. These days, Swannanoa is a home to Warren Wilson College with their farms and their trail system that anybody can go and explore and hike. 
Swananoway used to be a home to once world's largest blanket manufacturer. Beacon Manufacturing Company used to be right there in Swananoway. But these days, the 40-acre site of, of a former Beacon Manufacturing Company will revitalize the heart of Swananoway. Phase 1 will include an event lawn, bike park by international bike design company Vela Solutions, as well as a pedestrian trail along the perimeter of the park for people to hike, bike and run. Future phases of the development will introduce residential, commercial and industrial elements. So, as you can see, Swananoa is having some things happening some things uh, brewing to make it a more vibrant, all-inclusive, accessible community to its residents. Right now, if you were to go to Swananoa, you will probably think to yourself, where am I? Because the area kind of looks, you know, very industrial. There's a lot of things like warehouses and some um, mulch yards, some just random stuff, industrial and not a lot of residential right along the main road that takes you from Asheville through Swananoa all the way to Black Mountain. But if you were to right, turn left or right into all those neighborhoods, those areas around Warren Wilson College and some other areas, there's some mountain communities right there in Swananoa, and there's some standalone properties with lots of acreage, pastures with cows, and just very beautiful if you just go and explore more residential side of Swananoa. It is kind of, you know, out there, meaning that a lot of people don't even realize that it's there, but it is that area between Black Mountain and Asheville that is super convenient to everything. Median sales price in Swananoa right now is in the mid 300s. Again, a lot of the more lower price properties kind of pull it down. There's not enough inventory, there hasn't been enough of sales but generally you will get anything under three hundred thousand dollars will get you mobile homes anywhere in Buncombe County in Swanoa including so keep that in mind options when living in Swanoa very well established older communities some newer mountain communities or just living in a non-traditional neighborhood so to speak where you're not part of HOA you're not part of any neighborhood or association with or without rules, you just kind of, it's more of a farm style living. There's another neighborhood in Asheville that I wanted to mention in this video, and it really is up and coming, really is up and coming. I mean, unlike those other three areas that I mentioned, this one is kind of on the rough side, to be honest. Shiloh is a neighborhood that is located in South Asheville, just south of downtown Asheville. It is actually pretty centrally located. It was established in 1870s and it is one of the last African-American neighborhoods in Asheville, North Carolina. Shiloh is located with kind of sandwiched between Hendersonville Road on one side, Sweden Creek Road on the other side and Rock Hill Road on the third side of it. Interesting fact about Shiloh is that it's one of the poorest neighborhoods in the whole Asheville area. It is located right across the street from one of the most expensive neighborhoods in the whole North Carolina, not just Asheville. Bilma Forest is literally across the street, across from Henderson Road from Shiloh. So I know it's very unfortunate for Shiloh, but you know, it is going through its phases of gentrification and as you drive through it you'll definitely notice it and I mean 20 years ago I would drive through it only if I have to especially in the dark or in the evening and I would definitely drive with my windows up I would not have my windows down or stop to say hi to anybody because there was just some sketchy and still are some sketchy individuals walking the streets of Shiloh. But, you know, my son's daycare, his second daycare was located in Shiloh. I talked about it in previous videos. Just one of those places that offers better integration and into the community. 
and get a feel for what real life is sometimes for other people. Get out of your bubble and get a feel for what it's like for other people who struggle. But you, you do see some rough stuff in Chalo, or at least used to see more of that. I mean, when I would drive my son to drop off at his daycare, I would just cut through Shiloh because we lived on the kind of opposite side of it in South Asheville. So it would just like a shortcut that would drive through Shiloh. And I, you know, sometimes see some people doing, um, selling um, illegal substances from, from on the road or see some, I don't know, drunk, stoned, high mothers with the strollers with half naked kids just sitting there in the middle of winter it, it, it's, it's yeah there's some rough stuff that's happening there but in recent years what made me even think about shallow to include in this video <laughs> is that i'm driving especially that's not happening i want to say last three four years maybe i drive through shallow and i see these people walk the dog along the road in Shiloh. And mind you, there are no sidewalks in Shiloh, okay? It's just, a, it just it's a neighborhood, there's no HOA, none, none of that. It's a very traditional established neighborhood, part of town, no sidewalks, very narrow roads. And as you know, our roads are not, it, we're not on the grid where you can see far, it's up and down and it's like that. Sometimes you don't see what the traffic that's oncoming. And these people are walking or walking their dogs or two people are walking, maybe a couple are walking. <laughs> My first thought was, what are you doing? You want to get killed? Why are you walking here? And I keep seeing and seeing these people. And then I realized that people start moving into Shiloh. There are some pocket neighborhoods in Shiloh, smaller homes or older homes that have been remodeled, uh, revitalized and br brought back to life and people are moving in there. And it just dawned on me that it, it is an up and coming area. I mean, unfortunately for current residents, it is, you know, going through gentrification, but they're just kind of part of, I don't know, life, I guess, these days. So Shiloh is super centrally located, has very long history, it has its community center, they have playgrounds, very convenient to everything. So as you drive through Shiloh, you will see uh, quite a few abandoned homes, the homes that just need to be destroyed and rebuilt from ground up, as well as, like I said, some of the pocket neighborhoods, pocket spots of newer homes that um, are popping up here and in, in there. So that's an opportunity to get into a very, very centrally located neighborhood at a very affordable price. But do your due diligence about all things that I mentioned, like crime rates. And just like with anything else, what I tell people is drive through neighborhoods or that part of town you're interested at odd hours so you can really get a feel and taste for uh, what it's like to live there. You might see or hear things that you will not see during the day, but you will see or hear them in the evening or at night, just, you know, safety first, <laughs> but you know, do your due diligence. And as a bonus that I wanted to include in this video, although not in Asheville, not even in Buncombe County, Canton, North Carolina is located in Haywood County, just west of Asheville, about 20 miles from Asheville down the road. It used to be known as a paper mill town. Canton, North Carolina is the second largest town in Haywood County after Waynesville. And if you've been following any kind of news about this area for the past, you know, one, two years, you probably heard that Canton had its paper mill closed last summer, the summer of 2023. So on one hand, it was a huge tragedy for a lot of locals, for a lot of natives who had huge ties to that plant. I mean, people lived there because of that plant, that people worked there for generations on this plant. That's all they knew. And all of a sudden it was taken away from them. 
On the other hand, people who might not have had those ties to the plant and who kind of cared, not kind of, but cared about the environment, had a sigh of relief. They were kind of like, whew, thank God it closed finally, because it was a major environmental issue for not only air pollution, because that plant smelled so bad, uh, but also the river pollution that it was on. And along with environmental issues, the smell was not very attractive for businesses, for people to come and start up their families, start their businesses in Canton. But now a lot of people are hoping that the next phase, so to speak, of Canton will be opened up and more opportunities and possibilities for new businesses, industries, uh, tourism industry, one of them will come Canton way. Right now, median sales price in Canton is in the low 300s and it is an up and coming area because up until recently, and it's still kind of up in the air, you know, the plant is still there and nobody, it was not demolished, it was not sold, who knows, who knows what's going to happen. But um, up until recently, most people did not want to go and look towards Canton. Unlike those other areas that I mentioned, they were overflow areas for Asheville and still are. People who did not like Asheville, could not afford Asheville, could not find any, in, anything in Asheville, would go and find something in Swannanoa, Woodfin, Candler, and maybe farther towns from Asheville, but not in Canton. Canton was just kind of like a black sheep. Nobody wanted to go there, or most people did not want to, to be there. So the cost of living is a lot more affordable. You can get a lot more for your money. It is very, very beautiful there. In fact, the whole Haywood County is gorgeous. It's more mountainous. It's just, it's beautiful. And now with that plant being gone, it's going to probably open up more opportunities uh, for people to want to live there. It will drive the prices up, of course, and the, of course the concern is that a lot of locals, a lot of natives who've been here for years, for generations, will, will be priced out, just like a lot of locals are priced out and natives are priced out of Asheville. So we'll see, but it is an up and coming area in the Asheville region, kind of like a, that big elephant in the room. So Canton, North Carolina, check it out, drive through it. It has a very, very cute historic downtown with some coffee shops and some cute stores. Very, very cute, very beautiful and very close to Asheville. If you need something in Asheville, you're like 20 miles away from Asheville, which is nothing, right? Especially for somebody coming from big city. So that is it about areas and towns that are up and coming in Asheville and around Asheville. If you have any questions specifically about those areas or in general, if you have any questions, if you need help relocating to the Asheville area, that's what my team, team and I uh, do all day, every day. We help people relocate and have helped dozens of people do just that. If you need help, our contact information is down in the description and I will see you next time.